morning and welcome to Rising. We've got another great show for you today. It is Wednesday and we switched the table around. Uh, the better to see you with, my uh, friend. Absolutely. We're at a perfect angle with each other. <laughs> Neither straight on, but not, not exactly side by side either. We'll see how it goes. It's going to massively enhance our commentary for sure. Let's get right to it. Vice President Kamala Harris is continuing her media blitzkrieg. First stop on Tuesday was the Howard Stern Show. What did we learn? Well, not much, other than she likes Doritos, Formula One, and also Prince, the artist formerly known as. On a more serious note, she discussed the death threats that she's received throughout her career. She says she, however, refuses to live in fear. So when you went after gang members, I'm talking about uh, people who traffic, who traffic drugs yeah. and this and that kind of thing. Were you ever directly threatened by these people? They said, hey, you better just shut this down or you're, or you're going to get it? I've definitely had death threats. Yeah. Yeah, I don't generally talk about them, but right. yes. Why don't you talk about them? Because you don't want to encourage any kind of nuts out there, or is it because it just is too? It's just too hard to confront. I refuse to live in fear <laughs> of, of of the bad guy. She also touted her career as a prosecutor. To me, you're the law and order candidate, and yet they yeah. try to paint you like you're some leftist who, who, who i don't know who wants to have people running through the streets committing crimes you were a prosecutor i have put a lot of people in jail i have personally prosecuted everything from you know um child sexual assault to homicides and harris also made the claim that trump is getting played by dictators doesn't support our friend ukraine doesn't support, therefore, something America should always and has always, by the way, been a champion of, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity, which means the importance of standing against anyone who tries to take another nation by force. You're getting played. And some would say, look, I grew up in the neighborhood. Some would say you're getting punked. Yeah. If you stand in favor of somebody who's an adversary over your friends on principles that we all agree on and you look at it it's it's not only that he says he's going to be a dictator on day one let's, understand let's, what dictators yeah. do they jail journalists they they put people who are protesting in the street in jail to end her day harris also sat down with late night host stephen colbert where the two shared her favorite beer would, would you like to have a beer with me so i can tell people what that's like okay this was now, we asked ahead of time, because I can't just be given a drink to the Vice President of the United States without asking. You asked for Miller High Life. You asked for Miller High Life. I'm just curious. Okay, the last time I had beer was at a baseball game with Doug. So. Okay, so cheers. Okay, there you cheers. Go. Some really hard-hitting interviews there. And look, I don't begrudge her for doing friendly media interviews. It's fine to do friendly media. Um, the American people do want to see a little bit of personality mm -hmm. come to better understand the people running for office. That's fine. It should be in addition to hard-hitting, adversarial, confrontational interviews with major networks. And that's the part she doesn't do. So it's not that I'm mad she's doing this, but it's all she does. Is well, that fair? I, well, the, the exception to it is the 60 Minutes interview, which she did do, and in my opinion, didn't fare especially well in. To say no wonder least. she only wants to be on with Howard Stern in The View. Right. So, I mean, she's now doing these much softer interviews, which are much friendlier. And even then, they're not completely free of peril for her, because it was on The View that she was asked, are you going to do anything different from Biden, and she said she couldn't think of a thing that she was going to do differently. And then the Trump campaign and Republicans seized on that, given Biden's low approval numbers. In relation to 60 Minutes, I do think it's to her credit that she agreed to do that one. Like I say, I don't think it was particularly great. And it got back to that problem that even people on the left often have with Kamala Harris of the authenticity question. She was asked about her changes in position. She meandered into this answer about how she's traveled the country and listened to people and they want compromise. Not massively persuasive. Having said that, she did 60 Minutes. Trump, of course, declined to do 60 Minutes. Colbert asked her almost a version of the of the question that she got about, you know, what, what would you have done differently, where he asked, how can you be the change candidate? It, it, Americans want a change but you're part of the past administration. I think she has really struggled to come up with a satisfying answer to this. If, if I were her, I would try to say, well, they want, 
they want what they were promised, but we were unable to deliver it because we're thwarted by Republicans, so you need to vote for more Democrats, and then we can deliver. A, I don't agree with that, but if that's right. her, that's what I would say. Um, uh, additionally, the Howard Stern interview in particular, man, has this guy changed a lot sure. over the years into a just incredibly, I would say, simple-thinking partisan Democrat, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to, uh, trying to fangirl her as the candidate of law enforcement, which I think speaks to just the weird turn mm. she took in the 2018-2019 period, where she did really try to do a 180 on, on her more authentic self. Mm -hmm. Because I agree, she I mean, she was a prosecutor. She, mm -hmm. she was tough on crime, in some ways tougher on crime than I would like her to be on certain categories of crime, including truancy. And then she utterly, and I would argue insincerely, mm -hmm betrayed that version of herself to fit this, what, what elites thought was the current moment of defund the police and Black Lives Matter and everything, a, a elite movement that never had the level of deep public support that so many in progressive media pretended it did, and she was forced to adapt all these stances that ended up being very unpopular. Her campaign went nowhere, mm -hmm. and now she's undone all of that. Yeah, so without relitigating 2020, I wonder, was it the stances that were unpopular or was it the sense that she genuinely didn't believe one thing or another? Yeah, because well, we both. Did, you know, <laughs> well, we did see figures on the left do fairly well. I mean, Bernie sure. Sanders did pretty well in that primary, not as well as he'd done in 2016, but pretty well. I do think the issue of, of authenticity, as I say, really does... I mean, that's a big problem for Harris, I think. And when there is the, these polls that say people need to know her better, I think part Part of what they need to know is, does she have sincere beliefs? Now, just to that point, it was interesting to me in the Colbert interview, she said, the, the question of what she would do differently, she said, well, I'm not Joe Biden and I'm not Donald Trump. That's fine, maybe. I mean, that seems her entire campaign to some extent, right? I'm younger and more vibrant than Biden, and I'm not Donald Trump. That might actually be enough to win. It's just not an especially inspiring message. It might be enough because the candidates are, in fact, so old. I mean, she's running to replace a man who we have serious questions. Mm -hmm. Could I mean, There's no way he could serve another term. Mm -hmm. I have questions about whether he can even be the president right now as the world is on fire, as things are falling apart in the Middle East. What is the current administration doing to try to find a peaceful solution between Israel and Lebanon and Iran and everything? Do we, do we have someone who's who can be roused from nap time, we don't even know. It's very concerning. So that's a good pitch over Joe Biden. And of course, Donald Trump is advanced in age as, as well. I would argue he's not be, betrayed the exact same sort of, nearly the same sort of decline over time. Obviously, many people think the, the things he says have always been disconnected from, uh, from reality, but I, I don't think there's been a dramatic change mm -hmm. that we've witnessed. So if you liked him and thought he was policies were good and he was good at running the country before, I don't think you're watching him and saying, well, now he's not cut out for it no. anymore to the same extent as Biden. But, but in fairness, I think that isn't the primary objection to Trump. I mean, yes. you can, some people on the left do make the cognitive argument. But right. the primary They started making it when Biden was done. That's right. Couldn't exactly. make it then. And then when, the when, day when, after, they're like, well, you know, this guy's pretty old for this job, isn't and, he? And, and you and I actually cynical. agree that that was opportunistic and completely <laughs> sort of selective in the way the logic was applied there. But look, the argument against Trump is, firstly, he's unhinged, and secondly, he's an active danger to American democracy. And thirdly, and here's where the softer Harris interviews, I think, did work for her, she makes the argument that his inherent sort of selfishness or narcissism makes him ill place to actually solve people's problems. And I suspect that might be actually a more effective argument to whatever sliver of voters are still in the middle ground. Mm. Well, did Kamala Harris pass the I'd like to have a beer with this person test? You tell us. We'll have more rising right after this.